Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where I'm coming to you from a very snow-covered park here this morning. Uh, yesterday we had a, snor a snowstorm come into Tokyo a little bit after lunchtime and it dumped an unusually large amount of snow on the city and all around the neighborhood here. And uh, something which happens every four or five years here in Tokyo and indeed I think it's been pretty much a, a pretty consistent like four-year interval for the heavy snowstorms. Uh, four years ago was um, the quite big snowstorm which covered the park last time and then four years before that was a pretty much an immense snowstorm which paralyzed Tokyo for a few days. Uh, the snow yesterday wasn't quite as bad as the one we had eight years ago but a little bit more uh, serious than the one we had four years ago. Uh, for myself, luckily I was at home and didn't have to uh, worry about commuting back and forth on the icy and snowy roads where the visibility was really bad. And uh, later in the afternoon and early evening yesterday, we got to go out and enjoy the snow. I play in the snow, make snowmen, throw snowballs, and let the dog play around in the snow. So quite a lot of fun. Uh, unlike people who live in uh, places where they get snow pretty much all winter long, here snow is kind of a rare treat, uh, except for those people who have to go out and drive or work in it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the subject of today's video. Uh, today's video is going to be another Konica camera. Uh, this camera is called the Konica Big Mini. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you'd like to buy this Konica or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So for those of you who have watched my videos regularly, uh, you know I'm a big fan of Konica cameras. I've done a lot of videos about the various different models. Uh, Konica has made some really wonderful cameras over the years. And um, the, the, co the company has a long history. Uh, they began making uh, cameras back in the 19th century under the name uh, Kon Konishiroku, uh, the Konishiroku Company, which was originally out in the Nihonbashi area of Tokyo, uh, one of Tokyo's uh, I guess great business districts for uh, centuries and so uh, th by the time this camera was made in 19 in the 1990s uh, Konica had been making cameras for uh, I guess a century or so. Uh, Konishiroku is kind of a difficult name for uh, non-Japanese people to say so uh, in the 1940s Konica shortened or Konishiroku shortened the name to Konica as you see it here. A lot easier to say and uh, not a, an unpleasant name, I guess. Uh, the Big Mini is very similar to a lot of compact 35mm cameras which were introduced in the 1990s before digital took over the photography world. And there, there were so many different kinds of cameras made in those times. Most of them were very similar in appearance to this camera with things like a built-in flash automatic focus. But most cameras uh, came with a zoom lens rather than the fixed lens which this camera is fitted with. A lot of people uh, uh, tend to prefer, or at least uh, people who pretend to be serious photographers, uh, say they prefer cameras with fixed lenses or prime lenses because these uh, lenses are... Uh, capable of delivering, I guess, better performance than most zoom lenses. And so uh, because of that, cameras like this, the the Big Mini and certain versions of like the Olympus Mu camera uh, get pretty good uh, prices nowadays. They become very popular with collectors because uh, simply not a lot of these cameras were made with a simple fixed lens. Most of them had zoom lenses to kind of appeal to the, the mass market and kind of, uh, I guess, point and shoot photographers who needed dog, you know, I guess, cameras to take pictures of their families and dogs and cars and things like that. Uh, uh, the, the, mar the cameras with the fixed lenses were more intended for, uh, I guess, uh, more knowledgeable photographers. And uh, despite the, you would think that a zoom lens camera with the more complicated mechanism necessary to operate it or to form, you know, make the lens and all that would be more expensive. Actually, the reverse is true. And these, uh, these fixed, I guess, focal length cameras uh, tend to be more expensive and more valuable. And this has become more so today. Uh, these cameras were fairly expensive when they were introduced back in the 1990s. And then uh, when digital came along, their value kind of uh, fell sharply. And there was a time when you could buy these things for pretty much next to nothing. But in recent years, uh, as film has kind of made a resurgence and people are looking for uh, cameras with good lenses, which can make the most out of film, uh, the big mini has uh, become popular again and prices have gone up. 
and prices now are probably reaching the levels of what these cameras cost new back when they were manufactured. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, functions, and how to operate the Big Mini. We start at the top here, we see almost nothing. There are only two buttons located on the top. We have a power button, and you push the power button, and when the camera turns on, the lens pops out. And uh, we have a shutter button here on the right side. Uh, the main weakness to these cameras tend to be these two buttons here. The contacts in these cameras, uh, most of these cameras haven't been shot in a long time, and the metal contacts on the inside can tend to get a little bit corroded on cameras which aren't used, so sometimes it can be kind of difficult to either uh, turn the camera off and on or to take an exposure, mainly just because of the dirtiness. And taking apart one of these plastic cameras is actually quite an ordeal. They weren't actually made to be uh, taken apart once put together. They were meant to be assembled, sold, used for a few years, and simply discarded. Uh, I guess Konica didn't know that these cameras would become uh, popular with shooters in later years. So it was rather difficult to take these things apart and clean them. But if you find one which has the uh, contacts in, uh, in good condition, where the power button and shutter button work well, it's a good camera. And if you store the camera you know, in a safe and you know, clean, dry place, you shouldn't have any future issues with, the, with these buttons. And as you can see, the ones on this particular camera work fine. Uh, moving to the bottom of the camera, we have a standard quarter-inch tripod socket here. Plastic one, but since this camera weighs almost nothing, it doesn't really need a metal tripod socket. On the back of the camera here, we have kind of the mo more sophisticated or more, I guess, uh, complex parts of the uh, camera operating system. The first thing here is we have this little window to let you know that you have uh, film loaded in the camera. And through these windows, uh, you can see the kind of film you have loaded in the camera. Uh, the Big Mini has DX coating, so if you're using pretty much any 35mm film, if you drop it in, uh, the camera will read the electrical contacts on the film canister and automatically set the film speed. So this isn't really necessary to have this window, but uh, I, I guess it's kind of, uh, you know, some people think this is an interesting feature. On the next part here, we have kind of like a data imprint feature where you can program in the date here. We have, a, you can change the date mode here, and then we have this uh, switches here to make the selections and set it. I just put a battery in this camera this morning uh, to test it out and see how it was working. And of course, this goes back to January 1st, 1987. Uh, I kind of wish it was uh, January 1st, 1987, because that was kind of a, a fun year for me. <clears throat> In those days, I was driving around in my uh, 1970 Dodge Challenger RT, the Alpine white version, which was kind of a identical uh, car to that uh, car in the old movie Vanishing Point. Uh, I was a member of a car club in Southern California and having a lot of fun in those days. Uh, I really miss 1987 and see this kind of reminds me of those days. Uh, I really wish I still had my 1970 Dodge Challenger RT today. Uh, I would enjoy it a lot more than my current car, which is probably a much nicer car actually, but uh, not as fun as my old Challenger. Anyway, to get back to what I was talking about, next part here we have a LC uh, LCD indicator here, and this shows the basic functions which you can program with this mode button here. And the mode here button allows you to switch between the various functions. You can switch from, say, the uh, auto, say, auto flash to uh, manual flash or no flash. Uh, you could also uh, set exposure compensation uh, plus or minus one and a half stops. Uh, this is kind of uh, a useful feature. It's a little bit difficult to use on this camera, but it is a useful feature in places where you're shooting high contrast scenes. Say you're shooting something like a, a mountain which is half in shadow and you don't want the shadow part to look completely black. You can increase the exposure or to bring that out a little bit, or you can do the opposite. Uh, say something is too white and you don't want it to be so white. You know, you're out on a day like today where everything is uh, very snowy. Uh, uh, you can uh, change the exposure compensation using this button. We have a self timer button and we have the reset button here located on the other side. Uh, the camera uses, of course, a uh, battery. It uses a lithium ion CR123A battery, which is luckily uh, uh, quite easy to find and very common. And actually gives quite a, a long life to uh, uh, these cameras. I've been using this same battery here for testing and using a wide number of cameras, and you can see it's still, it's still fully charged. So uh, you should be able to get uh, quite a large uh, number of rolls of film out of one of these cameras with the CR123 battery. 
Loading the film in one of these cameras is simple. You just lift up on the lever here and pop open the film back. And drop in the film canister, feed in the film lead on this side here, and then simply close the door. And the camera will wind up to, uh, when you press the shutter button, it will wind up to the first frame, and then you can simply take a photograph. Now, uh, people who would like a camera like this, or people who are film enthusiasts, but uh, perhaps maybe they aren't that knowledgeable in how to operate, uh, say, a more classical style camera, but they still want to be able to go out and shoot film and enjoy the results they get with it. Uh, the metering system on this camera is very sophisticated and gives you very accurate exposures. Uh, if I were, say, to go out and... Uh, this is a wonderful camera for uh, shooting in color. Say, spring and summertime when you're going out trying to get pictures of the blossoms and things like that. And I would prefer to use something like um, a slide film with this camera. Something like... Uh, uh, let's say, uh, we don't have, of course, uh, Kodachrome anymore. But Fuji makes some really wonderful slide films, and this, this camera is perfect for those. If you want to bring out, you know, you get photos which have the really nice colors, but kind of natural colors. You, you can get really amazing colors from digital cameras nowadays, but the cameras are, in my taste, a little bit, you know, the, the colors are a little bit too realistic. You know, a little bit, uh, I don't know, uh, not real. It's kind of a, a digital interpretation of color, whereas film tends to actually give you a, a chemical representation of color. And our bodies and our eyes aren't really digital, they're kind of organic, and film is kind of an organic uh, element. And I really love you know, going out and shooting, say, Fuji Velvia uh, at colorful flowers or things like that in the springtime. I really love the results I get with it, and this camera would be perfect for that kind of film. Anyway. Uh, that's it for my review of the Konica Big Mini. Uh, it wasn't a very big or detailed review because there isn't really a lot uh, involved in using one of these cameras. It's pretty much a point-and-shoot camera with a little bit of manual control for the exposure on the back. Perhaps I should mention a few things to look for when you're thinking about buying one of these cameras. The first thing to look for is, of course, that the buttons on the top work smoothly. They don't always do that, as I mentioned before. Uh, the next thing to check is that the flash works properly. Luckily on this camera, the, the flash does work quite properly without any issues. Uh, other things to look for are uh, corrosion on the inside. The lithium batteries don't really uh, leak or cause much corrosion, but they can. And depending on how the camera was stored, you can get, I, I guess, a galvanic reaction between the contacts and the battery, which might have to be cleaned. If you come across one of these and it's not working properly, always check the battery contacts first. Clean them off with uh, a pencil eraser, and uh, once after using a pencil eraser, I like to use a little bit of lighter fluid or some kind of solvent on a cotton swab to remove the rubber eraser residue. Uh, another thing to check is... Uh, uh, just to make sure that it's not all nasty or whatever on the inside, that the lens doesn't have any focus and haze. But other than that, it's quite simple. There aren't any way, anything in the way of light seals here other than this rubber seal here. And this isn't really a, a light seal as much as it is something to keep the film canister from bouncing around on the inside. Uh, last thing to take a look uh, at is LCD bleed, which is uh, when LCDs were kind of a fairly new technology back in the 80s and 90s. The construction of these, or the manufacture of these, hadn't quite been perfected yet, and sometimes you have black splotches in them. Uh, luckily, this camera doesn't suffer for any, from any of those. Uh, a good thing to look for in these cameras is to, is to make sure that it... Uh, 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 it Looking through the viewfinder in the back, uh, make sure that it's clean on the inside. Usually a camera which has been uh, kept in its original case, these weren't uh, kept in leather cases, they were kept in kind of a synthetic case. The cases were really good protection against things like excess humidity, excess heat, or excess cold. And cameras with the original case will uh, uh, probably work better. Uh, let's see. And to go along with that, uh, as you can see, this camera came with the original case. So anyway. That's it for my review for the Konica Big Mini. Uh, if you like it, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, as I said in my video a couple of days ago, I, now that the holiday season's over here, uh, I plan to be making a lot more videos and listing a lot more cameras. If you'd like to see the videos, please subscribe. If you'd like to see what new cameras I'm getting, uh, please check out my stores. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.